Mumbai aren't ruthless anymore. They may have talent, but they don't have experience. As a bowling unit, they're basically RCB with Bumra. Four of the five people sat here had also gathered together before the start of the season and only one of them had said that Mumbai Indians will not make it to the playoffs. That back then was met with a lot of shock. It was not Dustin. Oh. It was here. Oh, it was you. And Much I, I to the outrage of all of you. How dare you say it. Uh, I was shocked myself that I said it. But at the moment, it seems like a reality. On ESPN Tricking for Run Order, what we're asking is, is MI faring the way they have so far the biggest shock of this season? We'll have that question answered through Tom Moody, Anna Kapoor, Mitch McLennigan and Dustin Silgado. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's start with you, Tom. Did we see this coming? Uh, no, we didn't see it coming because you, you only have to look at their, uh, particularly their Indian um, uh, squad and the quality they have there and the match-winning capability they have there. Um, it is any franchise's dream to have that depth of quality and diversity in there, you know, with fast bowling, death bowling, new ball bowling, power hitters, top order batters, left handers, all the things that you are searching for when you go into an auction, Mumbai have got it. So it, it totally blindsided me. I, I thought they'd be definitely top four. They still may be, but they've got some serious work to do. Wealth of riches that they've got with their, their local players is a really good one. And They've almost struggled to fit them all in. Uh, we've just seen with Hera come out on his first game and, and blow the lights out. You know, he was outstanding. Um, and they haven't been able to find a position for him with the return of Hardik Pandya. And, and even then, the starts that it got off to, they haven't been able to find a position for him to come in consistently. So it's just been a little bit inconsistent throughout. So on the back of that, I think, the, I think their overseas players haven't uh, stood up as much as they, they would have liked. Um, and and that's, that's just how it goes sometimes, I guess. I think right at the point of the arrow is the change in captaincy. Yeah. I think that's the first thing that needs to be discussed. I think Mumbai Indians never expected uh, the backlash and the consequences of the change of captaincy. Yes, Rohit Sharma is one of you know, the IPLs that India's greats, uh, not only as a batsman, but as a leader. He's proven that. And I think that shocked uh, the dressing room. I think it shocked the fan base. And I think the ripples of that has not gone away. If anything, it's kicked up and there are more waves, not ripples. And I think that has really thrown their campaign sideways. Tom's absolutely right. We thought because they've got such a strong Indian core, there's no way they're not making the top four. Sooner or later, they'll find a way to gel and get this. Looking at how they've bowled this year, or the problems that they've had essentially as a bowling unit, they're basically RCB with Bumrah. They have a strong batting, a deep batting, they don't have a leg spinner, and if they did not have Bumrah, God only knows sort of where they'd stand. They have some good bowlers. They're better bowlers perhaps than, I mean, Gerald Kutsi is a, yeah, he's one to watch out for, so there's one there, right? But he's young and new in the IPL. On an overseas standpoint, the average number of games played by overseas players in the squad for the league is 843 games. Mumbai is at 485. Mm. So they are plummeting right down, and they're the very last team with regards to games of experience played by internationals. The average amount of money spent out of the, out of the salary cap is 41.8 crore. That's the average of all the franchises, including Mumbai. But Mumbai's average is at 28.4. Mm. To me, the big miss out of all those numbers is the experience of their overseas players. Because when mm. you hit difficult times, whether it be on the back of a loss or in the middle of a game where you're needing that sort of calm, mature player that understands the game has the peaks and troughs, you haven't got that calm head. You haven't got that level head to be able to steady the ship. They have on the, on the Indian side, yes, but they don't have it on the international side. And every team leans on their internationals to be game yeah. breakers, yeah. game makers. And that's that's so, such a far cry from that successful MI setup. You look at their title winning sides, you had Pollard and Malinga as constants, you had Mitch Johnson, you had Mitch McLennigan here, you had uh, Trent Bolt so, play. So, so exactly on that, I think in the last three years or four mm -hmm. years, Mumbai lost their identity 
on how they want to build a squad. It's all well and good to say we have the strongest Indian core and that should technically balance out the lack of experience, right? If just as a wild theory, okay, they don't have the experience and they're overseas, obviously they've spent it to effectively have four IPL worthy captains in the same squad, which nobody else does. But if we just go back to the design that the Mumbai Indians played with, it was always a balance of your overseas that made sense and complemented the strengths of your domestic players. The minute, I think this lost their identity when they started getting obsessed is too strong a word, but fixated over players. It was perhaps the auction's best kept secret or worst kept secret that they will do anything to get Ishan Kishan back. That Jofra Archer has entered an auction without being available for that imminent season because Mumbai want him. And these are players that have cost them 23, 24 crore in an auction where that value would have got them Trent Ball back, would have got them Quinton de Kock back, would have got them maybe Rahul Chahar back, if not Yuzvendra Chahal. Do you think what may be also be happening, Mitch, is that the gap between the very best Indian players and then the ones just below that, it's, it's kind of narrowing down now. So, like hmm. say in the past, Mumbai Indians said, okay, we've got Rohit and Ishan and they're the best two Indian openers. But now an Abhishek Sharma is not far off those two yeah. and he's cost a lot less. Or like an all-rounder, you had Hardik who's the best now. A Nitish Kumar Reddy is, yeah. he can do a job for SRH, yeah. a Shahbaz Ahmad can yeah. do a job for SRH. Dhruv Durel, Riyan right. Parag, You're these are players who right. haven't cost anything close to what Mumbai have paid for yeah. their Indian players. And then teams like RR and SRH can spend all that money on the really big sure. overseas yeah, players. It's a, it's a really good point. Um, I think you've got to look at, say, using Abhishek Sharma as an example. Um, he's been at SRH, was he there for three years now? Yeah. Um, so, so maybe a fraction longer. Longer than so, that, yeah. Longer than that. So he's had... Um, He's had a long period of time with some really experienced local players, but probably more importantly, some really experienced overseas players. And, and that's significant. Um, I, I remember in 2020, uh, we had Mohsen Khan, yeah. um, a, a part of our bowling unit, who's now become a frontline bowler in the IPL and a very good one, guy knocking on the door of playing for India. Um, but our four bowlers were, I was on the bench, had Trent Bolt, mm -hmm. Coulton Isle and Pattinson. Yep. So for him, his development was training with us every day mm. um, and watching and talking and learning um, from guys who have played multiple years either in the IPL or, or for, their, for their country and won Ashes series, won IPLs, won World Cups. Teams with the stronger bench um, train harder and perform better in games because yeah, you're competing point. against mm. the best players off the field yeah. And so when you go into a game, it's a lot easier. So the standards yeah. of training are a lot higher than the standards in the game. And, and that's a significant factor that, that shouldn't be overlooked. I used to associate Mumbai with being ruthless. Mm. You could carry a few players and see what happens when you had a squad that was tough to get in. Where there were 18, 19 players perhaps who were really challenging to make that squad. Where your bench was stronger than the first team of others. Mm. That's changed now. Post the 10 team auctions, post the standard of the Indian players being mm. raised, all that has changed. Mumbai aren't ruthless anymore. Every time I turn on a Mumbai game, the commentators are talking about tactics. Do you think this is a time, Tom and Mitch, where Mumbai Indians say, okay, to get Hardik back in form as a player, you give him a bit of a break as captain. Do you think that's even, like, if that's even a possibility? Oh, it's, it's a possibility. It's a conversation mm. you, you might want to have with Hardik. Because um, ultimately, Mumbai and Hardik need him in form. Yeah. Uh, as simple as that, and India need him in form. Outside yeah. of that, going into a World Cup. Um, and he, he looks very short of form with ball and bat, and he looks lost with ball yeah. and bat. Yeah. You know, where is his role? We've seen his role change really from game to game. To me, I'd like him to find his compass to where he belongs in that side and to lead the side as a player, first and foremost, mm. and then the captain. And might I just add that it's okay for a franchise to accept that they got a big decision wrong and there is precedent for it. We thought Ravindra Jadeja had played his last game for CSK. Yeah. He was a, sh a, sh a surprising choice for captain and they, m they nipped that in the bud in halfway through a season. Oh, we thought, oh, it's just so embarrassing for Jadeja, he'll never be the player mm. again. His stocks have only gotten higher. Despite all of that, a lot of MI fans will turn around and say this is the part of the season where we just kick into gear. They've done this famously a lot of times, but is anyone backing them to eventually make another heist and finish in the top four? Uh, oh, look, of course you've got to give them a chance because it's mathematically possible. Uh, I think it's going to be a very hard road though. Dustin? I think 
if it happens, it's going to be based on individual brilliance. Because I just see, there was a moment in their game against Rajasthan <coughs> Royals where they had a misfield on the boundary. And we haven't even got into, by the way, their fielding. They've given away more runs in misfields than any other team comfortably this IPL, which is kind of an indicator as to where their confidence is. But there was this moment where Mohammad Nabi misfielded on the boundary and Jasweet Bumrah was just smiling as if, you know, he was resigned to those kind of things yeah. happening. So, I don't see them playing together as a team. If they make it, it'll be because of maybe two or three batters just having an incredible run. So, so they won't make the finals if they play it like individuals. They go into self-preservation mode. There's no chance of them making the finals. They, they need to find a way after they had that week off to come back together like they did. Uh, smiling, they look like a unit those first couple of games back. They're going to have to find a way to galvanise again because you're not going to win five from six or maybe six from six yeah. um, if you're all trying to pull in different directions. So they're going to have yeah, to right. it's be a team collective effort to get there. They made the playoffs last year, but I think this is where Rohit Sharma was you know, tremendous as finding a way for that team to overcome its weaknesses and make a playoff, like MS Dhoni did with that bowling attack as well. I don't see that happening with Hardik Pandey, unfortunately. It looks daunting for Mumbai. Can they be one family as a unit and make their way to the playoffs somehow? Tell us in the comment section, will MI finish in the top four? One family? <laughs> Very good.